So with that, it's kind of our baseline of where we are. Um, it, uh, the, in the next segment, I'd like to focus on the impact and opportunities for public health. And I did some research for this, um, for this particular um, presentation uh, to try to see, look at some of the national trends in public health as well as what we're doing here in South Carolina and some of which I was aware of and, and some um, it, which I discovered when I, when I did my research. Um, some of the most prominent national trends in public health that the research show and the literature shows is um, a focus on the integration of information between public health and healthcare provider community, getting a closer liaison, um, moving more toward um, real-time surveillance, surveillance, um, getting faster access to information so that the information um, is available electronically from right out as a byproduct of the creating the health record as opposed to um, a separate reporting process and having the reports be more timely in terms of capturing the information in a much more timely fashion, reducing that lag time between what's going on in the office of the practitioner and the information that becomes available to public health in terms of monitoring and, and working with um, population health. Um, moving from reactive to um, proactive and real-time surveillance. And we've got an example here, if we can put it up real quick, of um, something that Nikki Terpathy, um, who is CEO of the Massachusetts eHealth Collaborative, um, tells a story when he speaks sometimes. And he uses a chart. This is kind of a rough approximation. But he uses a chart like this. Um, and he shows um, this is the incidence of heart attacks. And he shows the, a level, kind of a level in the population of heart attacks. And, and all of a sudden, when you hit around 2001, um, after the fact, when they looked back in the healthcare community in Boston, they saw this trend line, which starting in 2001 showed this tremendous spike in the incidence of heart attacks. And then when he shows the slide, he shows how in 2004 they brought it back down. Does anyone know what this depicts, what this coincides with? If you didn't guess, 2001 was when Vioxx came on the market, and 2004 is when Vioxx went off the market. And I think you're all well aware that Vioxx came off the market because um, it was discovered that it increased, remarkably increased, the incidence of heart attacks. But the point that Mickey Terpassi makes is it took us four years to realize that in public health from a population health perspective. Um, you know, if, and his point that he makes is if we had had electronic health information used more widely at that time, we would have spotted that trend much, much sooner. And how many lives could we have saved um, of people who didn't need to die um, because it took us so long to discover that trend line. And that seems like a pretty powerful um, message about the, the value of being able to um, shift our monitoring with electronic health information to be much more timely. And even predictive. Um, predictive analytics is another whole area that's coming about where we can actually not only see an actual trend line like that, but see early indicators that would allow us to actually predict um, the potential for uh, healthcare problems. 
Um, other areas, um, patient reported data is another trend, um, both in the delivery of health care and clinical practice as well as public health. And um, so there's a, some research and stuff going on in that area and the value that it brings and what issues it might introduce in terms of electronic, in terms of patient medical records. Um, looking at the social determinants of health, I think that's, that's part of this whole taking a more systemic look at, at health care problems a more holistic look, recognizing that you know, we can't just isolate health issues for patients by themselves and treat them as if they were a silo independent of the broader perspectives of environmental and social determinants of health. And then uh, the, the, uh, the developing specialty of public health informatics. So if we look um, specifically at South Carolina, some of you are probably more aware of the trends than I am even, but these are a couple things I wanted to make some points about today. Um, one is just the new masters of health information technology here at the University of South Carolina. It's actually a partnership between the in in information technology department and the Ar Arnold School of Public Health trying so that we've got in both perspectives, practice and the technology, trying to prepare students um, to make that handshake, looking to the future, students who are prepared to lead healthcare into the future with the new opportunities that IT provides in the healthcare world. Um, Public Health um, is a participant in the Health Sciences South Carolina. You're probably aware, uh, familiar with that. The Health Sciences South Carolina is the collaboration of, of academic and private healthcare providers in South Carolina, fairly unique in the states in terms of bringing together the communities focused around um, improving the delivery of healthcare and using information technology. Um, they're involved with both the regional extension centers and the uh, SkyX, the South Carolina Health Information Exchange. Um, and public health is very much a part of some of the initiatives that are going on with the South Carolina Health Information Exchange, which recently made available um, a direct secure messaging, which is essentially electronic, you know, secured electronic email that allows physicians, offices, and other healthcare providers to be able to securely exchange health information. Kind of the security level you have when you make payments um, to banks or to, you know, withdraw money from the banks, the high level of, of network security to protect. Um, and then we have, one of the examples is the South Carolina Institute of Medicine and Public Health um, is very much involved in the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Building a Culture of Health, which is a um, health care application, I mean a public health application, I meant to say, excuse me. Um, and both SkyX and the South Carolina Med Medicine and Public Health um, we're, are involved in, in testing different applications using electronic health. One is with DHEC, the immunization registry, um, and there are additional public health applications that uh, involve retrieving immunization certificates, syndromic surveillance, electronic lab reporting, and interstate connectivity, um, all by way of allowing better coordination of information for, um, for population health and public health. Okay. So, um, so uh, one of the questions that was posed to me before was, okay, what are some of the new skills for public health professionals? And um, one is the, the e use of electronic health records for public health purposes. Um, public agencies, 
public health providers, but also from the perspective of understanding the data that's collected, the power of being able to use that data to look at health information. Um, the data, data analysis, the informatics, um, which is that emerging, which is a very much an emerging trend. Um, but also um, areas of workflow analysis, process redesign, mean methodology, um, with a focus on population health. Because not only, you know, public health, one of the challenges public health faces is transforming itself, too, to be able to really do things differently to capture and take advantage of the power of um, electronic health information. Um, skills like project management are really important because every time we try to implement a change within healthcare, um, it has to be as carefully thought through and orchestrated um, to really be successful. And so essentially, every time we try to make a change, it's, we're really talking about a project that has to be thought out carefully um, and managed carefully to ensure its success. And then, you know, change leadership and advocacy. Um, I think you're probably all well aware that, you know, change is always challenging at best. And the leadership of change, and it's really about leadership, not management. How do you get people, how do you help people buy in um, to see the opportunities, to help them find new ways of doing things? and to really be able to advocate and help them understand how, how it's really urgent to make changes in the way we've always done things if we want to be able to improve um, the results that we're getting. And so at this point, I'd like to throw out another question. What one thing would you like to be able to change? or uh, would you like to be able to do or change? What one thing would you like to be able to do that you cannot do today? <laughs> 